Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on today's video of Calling All Titans, I'm going to get yelled at. Today's Titan is my least favorite in the anniversary set, and possibly my least favorite overall, but it's a Titan that many were expecting in one form or another. I'd like to start this video with a confession. I have never beaten Final Fantasy III, the Japanese III. I just greatly preferred V, and I wasn't feeling it at the time, and then my DS broke, and while I'm getting things off my chest, I also want to confess that my original plan was to never play a game with this Titan because I didn't see the point for reasons you'll understand in a bit. However, I expected some backlash to that, so I relented and I have played with it, and nothing has changed for me. This faction is the first of a few unfortunate casualties of Titan McTitan face because that type of power replacement ability is really what this faction needs, but not even remotely close to what they got, and that faction is Cowboys. Dueling is an extremely divisive mechanic but for the first part of this video, I'm actually going to ignore much of that because I think that Cowboys have larger problems beyond the idea that dueling is risky and dumb. And that's where I want to start as we explore where the Cowboys went wrong, what they need, and what the Titan gives them. I mentioned Titan McTitan face because I want to start from the general premise that destruction, more often than not, is bad. In a game where you are competing with shared power, destruction can absolutely backfire creating wars of attrition, and making you just as inefficient as your rival. And to anyone who disagrees, I counter with the fact that sharks have replacement power, and they still got a titan apparently. But looking very closely at the cowboy cards, we can see some clear functional problems. Looking at Gunfighter, it's a 3, and to survive its own destruction, it needs to win to be able to destroy a 3 or more. But unless you are breaking that base that turn, particularly soloing it, you aren't doing much more than buying the right to destroy a minion with actions, actions that are much more limited than you think. The Cowboys have seven dueling cards, three of which are gunfighters. But they also have predominantly seven cards that help them win duels. Those are Quick Draw, Form of Posse, and Deputies. What do all those cards have in common? It's all temporary power. Unless you are breaking the base that turn, it makes negative sense to invest your power actions, especially when deputies work outside a duel, and that is predominantly how I use them. This actually leads into the next problem, which is High Noon. One thing High Noon does right is actually lets you choose the minion to duel, because it means you can leverage the already boosted power of a gunfighter. But the extra minion play does not make sense internally. If you played a Pinkerton, you'd be wasting the opportunity for the duel counter. If you played a gunfighter, You'd either have it be a blank 3, or you're starting over from scratch and would need another power action since you cannot leverage the power of the duel previously won. You'd never play a deputy because no one plays deputies as minions. You are completely incentivized to use them for their free, unblockable special. And you wouldn't play sheriff because, why not just play sheriff as your regular minion, duel with that with high noon, and start with a greater chance of winning, one that lets sheriff retain the power if you choose to duel again when the base is scoring. I must admit that this is a bit odd, because I really like Blood in the Water, and that's what High Noon is trying to do. High Noon gives you the play and the destruction, but the package just doesn't work out contextually. Of course, Pinkerton is the exception in terms of temporary power, because it does add permanent power. But Pinkerton is localized, and I swear on Sonus's life that this used to be global, in what I can only describe as the Mandela Effect. With it being local, it's not just limiting, but it incentivizes the wrong thing. Given that Pinkerton cannot initiate a duel itself, the premise is that I have Pinkerton and someone else already there, along with a rival minion. That probably means I'm at the 10 power range, so I should be thinking about winning the base, not trying to control it. Notice that, until this point, I've glossed over the fact that dueling gives another player a chance to hijack your turn, and I'm still ignoring that for now, because it's been said extensively before. But looking deeper, I would argue that the best cowboy cards have nothing to do with dueling at all in how they're used. They have a lunch run. They have a free 8 power in easily granular distributions. They have extra play potential. They even have a movement card that can move your titans. Not many of these cards leading to the dueling strategy, but they at least work in spite of it. In fact, the dueling context gives the cowboys a real minion order problem. If Gunfighter is meant to be the finisher for bursting, you can't play them early, otherwise they'd be dead. And you can't play your deputies either. This makes them very draw order dependent with their partner. And the worst part of this is, none of it really matters because dueling is dumb since it gives another player a chance to hijack your turn for simply not enough benefit. But given that this is a Calling All Titans video, we have to ask, 
What does the tight end do to address these many issues? And the answer, it turns out, is deceptively simple. Nothing. Jumping straight to the first ongoing ability, this tight end prevents other players from moving or returning minions from the dueling base. In other words, this tight end no longer lets players do something they really should not have been able to do in the first place. It is an eroded dueling, plain and simple. Instead of changing the rules, the rules only change for Cowboys, which to be fair, is the faction with the most dueling. But the Samurai duels have moments where it absolutely matters, and they would benefit from the blocking as well. Rather than eroding the rules, the game instead chose to create technical debt for any future appearances of dueling, which makes what they did at the exact same time even more curious. What's crazy is that I didn't think about it until this week, but for some reason, shuffling and placing minions away from the base is deemed okay. It just solidifies for me how this ability feels out of place and out of regard for what dueling is actually trying to do. Interestingly, in the rare event that two other players are dueling on the same base, probably because of a base's ability, this tight end will block them both even though cowboys are not involved in the duel. I'm not sure how intentional that is. And in case anyone asks given the fleeting definition of during, a duel ends when the winner has been declared but before the reward is applied, so I've confirmed that this will not block run em off if you were to lose. But we have to talk about the entry criteria and the discarding of a card. Without discarding a card, this would be an even bigger errata to dueling, since it delays the clash, and you have no reason not to play this tight in every duel that you could. The ongoing ability implies that all duels are local, which is definitely true, because if you are gunfighting on multiple bases, I have questions. But what about the second ability? If you win a duel, globally of course, you draw a card. That's your reward, drawing a card. Part of me feels like this ability only exists because of the two block rule, when it can easily be combined into the first ongoing, it makes it seem like there's a second ability that isn't really there. Now, I've had months to think about and prepare for this video, and it's still hard to put into words how much the combination of these abilities drives me crazy. But the other day, I decided to approach it from a different perspective. Dueling only exists because the Cowboys got voted in, it really does feel out of place here and it's at best avoided with innocuous plays that are just freebies, and it's terrible when someone thwarts your duel and completely interrupts your turn, wasting your cards and your opportunity. So yes, this does make Cowboys better by reversing what was really a bad decision, but that's not what Titans should do, and that's not what dueling should do either. So I wanted to explore from the perspective of the challenged player, since they are just as much involved in the duel. For dueling to feel like a real mechanic, the challenged player would need to feel incentivized to win the duel, not just thwart it, and to be incentivized beyond just simply letting your minion survive. And I don't think the Cowboys Titan incentivizes the opponent at all, because before, no one was winning. In fact, players can still play cards to move minions to there, avoiding the solo, or still overtaking it with mass movement. You just can't move from there. To incentivize me as a player, to make dueling feel like it actually matters, I feel like you need to raise the stakes. Not that I am suggesting this exact ability, but if the reward were opened up to both players, and the reward scaled with the power of the losing minion, that'd be something worth fighting for, and it would actually have an interesting effect. The more you increase the power of your minion, the greater the reward if you actually lose. But if you concede, you cap the reward while simultaneously guaranteeing that they get one. From the people I've talked to who like dueling, they focus on it as a mind game and it hasn't played out that way for me in years, so maybe it really needs to be more of a mind game, or penalize the player if they back out of the duel, rather than outright preventing it. The general theme of this video is that the Cowboys Titan doesn't fix their issues for me, it only slaps a massive band-aid on their worst decision. And I'm not sure that Titans can fix deep issues within factions like Cowboys. Imagine if Quick Draw was power counters rather than temporary power, like a badge of honor for winning the duel you'd be more open to Phase 2 non-terminal destruction. On Sheriff, it would set up some interesting come at me plays. The card would also feel unique, rather than stretching to tie augmentation in terms of value. This Titan doesn't really create any new partners for Cowboys, because it is much more about who they play against rather than who they play with. The Cowboy game plan doesn't change at all. As I said before, it just stops your opponent from doing something they shouldn't have been allowed to do in the first place, which is why I didn't want to play this Titan, because it's wasting precious time when I have 11 Titans and tons of factions to play, 
especially since I prefer to play games with and without the tight end to really see the difference. But in a recent Cowboy game, which I lost because dueling did nothing, I used it as an opportunity to play the game with and without the tight end in my head. I still only dueled once, and it cost a fortune to create a solo, but there could have been a second duel there at the end, and the tight end would have stopped my opponent from winning on my turn instead of winning on the very next turn. So there is something to be said for that. Looking back on previous Cowboy games, and in the few matches I played with this, I do see it making a difference in some, but it doesn't nearly address the myriad of issues that Cowboys have, particularly their minion draw order problem. And the fact that they chose to address issues in Titan's form, creating technical debt for a mechanic I doubt we'll earnestly see again, just makes me mad in all honesty, and I'm less inclined to play Cowboys now rather than more inclined. It acknowledges that dueling was a bad decision without really addressing it, and with 90 or more other factions, I have no shortage of things to play, so sorry Cowboys. But seriously, if the Cowboys had Titan McTitan face, it would clearly make them so much better. What would you have expected the Cowboy Titan to do? Do you see this ability as an errata to dueling like I do, or am I completely missing the point? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.